The Ducati Desert X is about as good-looking ADV bike as I've seen. At least, that was until I cast my eyes on MV Agusta's two new ADV models, the Lucky Explorer 5.5 and its bigger sibling, the Lucky Explorer 9.5. Wow, I thought, MV Agusta, producing ADV bikes. This has got to be good, and Ducati has got to be worried, right? You might think that MV Agusta, being well known for their impressive road racing history and premium avant-garde designs, would not be best placed to challenge more established ADV manufacturers, but that would ignore history. See, MV Agusta was, at one time, owned by Kajiva, who had also acquired Ducati and Husqvarna. Now you can see where this is going, can't you? Husqvarna, Kajiva, it's going off-road. Back in 1990 and again in 1994, using its Ducati brand's 900L twin engines in a trellis frame of its own design, Kajiva was all ready to rally with its lucky explorer elephant. As you can imagine, this got me very excited as I began to read about MV Agusta releasing the lucky explorer 5.5 and the 9.5. I started to reminisce about the old Kajiva elephant ridden by two Dakar victories by Eddie Orioli. What a rider he was, and what a bike that was. While Eddie's Kajiva used the same engine found in Ducati's L-twin-powered 900SS, and why not, Kajiva owned Ducati, remember? The elephant was detuned to the Dakar's permitted maximum 75 horsepower limit. It only weighed a feather like 180 kilograms dry and 224 kilograms with its, wait for it, 56 litre tank brim full. It had electronic fuel injection. The non factory elephant available to the public had a 51 litre tank, 20 more horsepower, and a six speed gearbox with a 19 inch front and 17 inch rear, weighing in at a still svelte 204 kilograms for such a big bike. And now you can see why I'm getting excited. So with Kajiva's DNA, MV Agusta has got to be onto a good thing. The original Elephant is one of the bikes that inspired that classic Dakar rally look, which I love. The MV Agusta Lucky Explorer 5.5 and 9.5 look almost as good, particularly the 9.5, and like Ducati's Desert X, they've paid homage to those double headlights with the same pugnacious rally stance. Going down the specs on the soon-to-be-available Lucky Explorer 5.5, I saw the premium Brembo brakes, adjustable suspension, spoked wheels, and over 8 inches of ground clearance. Here I thought, at last, a truly dirt-worthy sub-600cc ADV bike that will offer those with a CB500X who want to move up in capability but not engine size something worthy. It's got a Benelli frame, and with 47 horsepower, and 38 foot-pounds of torque, it could be punchier than a CB500X. Some might be put off by the Chinese engine, but it's essentially the same unit used by Benelli, while KTM and BMW are comfortable with Chinese units in their bikes. So why not MV Agusta? But sadly, we have to talk about the elephant in the room here. Because thoughts of the original Kajiva Lucky Explorer elephant were vaporized when I saw the weight of the 5.5. MV Agusta, it seems, took the epithet elephant too literally. Originally, the elephant was used by Kajiva as a good luck symbol, but MV Agusta seems to have embraced it on a whole new level. While the triple cylinder 124 horsepower Lucky Explorer 9.5 tips the scales at a semi respectable dry weight of 220 kilograms, albeit significantly heavier than the original Elephant and the Desert X, you'd think that the Lucky Explorer 5.5 would be a decent amount lighter. But think again. It's an identical 220 kilograms or 484 pounds without any fluids or fuel in the 20 litre tank. That's right exactly the same weight as the 9.5. What gives? I mean, this is 20 kilograms heavier than a fully fueled CB500X. In truth, the Explorer 5.5 is going to be well over 500 pounds when fully fueled and with all fluids on board. And that, my friends, is the elephant in the room. The Lucky Explorer 9.5 is certainly the much better of the two bikes, and may have Ducati glancing over its shoulder when the more up-spec model is released. 
the Lucky Explorer 5.5 is neither lucky nor an explorer, at least not off-road. At over 500 pounds wet, it's going to feel cumbersome, anemic, and very much like riding a lame elephant. So I can't help but be a little disappointed. I thought with the launch of the Tenere 700 and the Tuareg 660, we had begun to get that super tanker turned around and begun to see manufacturers willing to offer us lighter ADV bikes, especially the ones with smaller CCs. But with MV Augusta offering us a 500cc bike at 500 pounds, I guess not. But what do you think? Am I being too critical of MV Augusta's first foray into the smaller CC ADV market? Or should we expect more from a premium Italian manufacturer? What do you think of MV Augusta offering Chinese motors in their bikes? Will the 5.5 tempt you away from other mid-size ADV bikes like the Tenere 700 or the Aprilia Touareg 660? I'd be really interested in knowing what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider, out.